Welcome back from your weekend. Hope you guys had a uh, great weekend. And here on this uh, Monday, we're going to pick up with another mini message in verses 22 and 23 of Genesis 32. Jacob is still dealing with Esau, and he's made kind of a had a bad reaction, a good reaction a bad reaction, and now another good reaction. I feel like Jacob here is just riding this crazy roller coaster of emotions. Uh, and he's really struggling, and I understand why he fears for his life. He knows he's wrong, so that's another thing. It's one thing to confront and deal with a difficult situation when you are right or you feel you're right. It's a whole nother thing to deal with and confront uh, a bad situation when you know you're wrong. And he knew he was wrong. So here he is struggling with this, but God's going to walk him through it. And I like his reaction here much better than I do the reaction for verses 7 and 8 or verses um, 13 through 21 that we looked at on Friday. Here's verses 22 and 23. It says, During the night Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two servant wives, and his eleven sons and crossed the Jabbok River with them. After taking them to the other side, he sent over all his possessions. So I like this because he sent them across the river, which put them on the same side of the river as Esau was. So if you know anything about military history, you know anything about tactics or anything, you, you don't ever want your back to a river if you think you're going to be attacked. Because if you're overrun, you've got nowhere to go. You want other exits. You want other avenues to get away. So then you don't back yourself up against the river. So Jacob here was taking his most precious, the most precious things in his life, his family, and he moved them across the river. All his possessions, everything, on the same side of the river as Esau. So I think there was some trust here. I think maybe he was getting it, getting his mind in a better place. And then he stayed on the other side of the river and spent the night alone. And so here he is, I think, seeking after God. I would imagine he spent some time praying. And God had to get him alone so he could deal with him. And sometimes it's very true for us. We've got to get alone with God. We've got to have that personal time we spend with him to stop, to listen, to learn. And I think Jacob needed to get away from some of the hustle and bustle, the family, the concerns. Because look, there would have been anxiety running through the entire family. Rachel and Leah would have been very worried about what was going to happen to them. And even more importantly, what was going to happen to their children. So here they are dealing with that. And Jacob gets alone by himself. And here I think he was praying. He was remembering what God did for him. He was remembering the promises. He was remembering all of these things, knowing that he was fixing to face something tomorrow that he really didn't know how it was going to turn out. He could trust in God. He could believe in the promises. But now he was going to go put that in action. And it's one thing to say we trust God. It's another thing to go really put that into action and confront things. And that's what he was going to do. He was going to confront something very difficult in his brother Esau. And tomorrow, he's going to meet a little man on the other side of that river alone. And they're going to have a wrestling match. See you guys tomorrow.